Welcome to an example of integration using trig substitution. Before applying trig substitution though, we should verify that basic u substitution won't work. So for example, looking at this integral, if we let u equal x squared minus 49, then differential u would be 2x dx, which does not fit the form of the integral. Or if we let u equal x to the fourth, differential u would be 4x to the third dx, which again does not fit the form of the integral. But because the integral does contain a square root in the form of the square root of x squared minus a squared, where a squared is a constant, we can try trig substitution by letting x equal a secant theta. Notice in this case, a squared is equal to 49, and therefore a is equal to seven. So we can try letting x equal seven secant theta. We don't want to confuse this form with the two other forms involving trig substitution. For example, if we had the square root of a squared minus x squared, we would let x equal a sine theta, and if we had the square root of a squared plus x squared, we would let x equal a tangent theta. But again, our square root fits this form here. And therefore, dx is equal to seven secant theta tangent theta d theta. But let's also sketch a reference triangle for angle theta. If x equals seven secant theta, then secant theta must equal x divided by seven. So if we sketch a right triangle, and this is angle theta, secant theta is the ratio of the hypotenuse to the adjacent side. So we can label the hypotenuse x and the adjacent side seven. And therefore, using the Pythagorean theorem, this leg here would be equal to the square root of x squared minus seven squared, or x squared minus 49. Now let's go ahead and perform substitution. We would have the integral of 12 times the square root of x squared minus 49. Well, if x is seven secant theta, we would have 49 secant squared theta minus 49. dx is equal to seven secant theta tangent theta d theta. x to the fourth would be seven to the fourth secant to the fourth theta. Let's go and just write seven to the fourth secant to the fourth theta. And now let's begin to simplify. The square root of 49 secant squared theta minus 49 is going to simplify to seven tangent theta, but let's go ahead and show why. We can factor 49 from these two terms. That would give us the square root of 49 times the quantity secant squared theta minus one. Well, the square root of 49 is seven, and secant squared theta minus one is equal to tangent squared theta, and the square root of tangent squared theta would be just tangent theta. So we have the integral of 12 times seven tangent theta times seven secant theta tangent theta d theta divided by seven to the fourth, secant to the fourth theta. Now let's begin to simplify. Notice how we have two factors of seven in the numerator and four in the denominator. So these will simplify to one. This simplifies to seven squared. We have one factor of secant here and four factors of secant here. This would simplify to one, simplify to secant to the third. So here we have 12 over seven squared, that's 12 49ths times the integral of tangent squared theta divided by secant cubed theta d theta. Now let's go ahead and write these integrand in terms of sines and cosines. Since tangent theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta, tangent squared theta would be sine squared theta divided by cosine squared theta and one over secant cubed theta is the same as cosine cubed theta. Notice here, two factors of cosine theta would simplify out. This simplifies to one, this simplifies to cosine theta. So now we have 12 49ths 
times integral of sine squared theta times cosine theta d theta. We can integrate this using u substitution, where if we let u equal sine theta, differential u would be cosine theta d theta. Let's do this on the next slide. Again, if we let u equal sine theta, this would be u squared, and differential u is cosine theta d theta, which fits this perfectly. So we can write this as 12 forty ninths times integral of, this would be u squared du. So we'd have 12 forty ninths times u to the third divided by three plus c. Notice how we have a common factor of three here, simplifies to one, simplifies to four. So now we have four forty ninths, and since u is equal to sine theta, we have four forty ninths sine cubed theta plus c. But now for the last step, we want this in terms of x, not theta. So now we'll go back to the reference triangle and determine what sine theta would be. Well, if this is theta, and the sine ratio is the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse, notice that sine theta is equal to the square root of x squared minus forty-nine divided by x. So we'd have, again, the square root of x squared minus forty-nine divided by x raised to the third plus c. We could leave it like this, but let's go ahead and simplify this one step further. Denominator, we would have forty-nine x cubed. And remember, if I have the square root of a, that's the same as a to the one-half power. So having the square root raised to the third power would be equivalent to four times the quantity, x squared minus forty-nine raised to the three-halves power plus c. This would be our antiderivative. I hope you found this explanation helpful.